welcome to Bellevue Baptist Church in North Ogden, Utah, and, and welcome to our YouTube viewers from around the, the country. We're glad to have you uh, worship with us uh, today. And as always, we're speaking of our exceeding abundantly able God from Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. We must remember that faith defeats fear. Faith defeats stress. Faith defeats anxiety. Faith defeats discouragement. Faith defeats depression. We may lose a battle, but I read the back of the book and we win. We win. God's still in the miracle business. He's still on his throne. He's still all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at the same same time. So with those thoughts about uh, zeroing in on the Lord, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come now to just to present your word, pray that go forth in the power of the Spirit, be received that same power. We just ask through the word, Lord, that you people will ask you to be their savior. We, we commit this message to those that need Jesus, those that need a, a bounce in their Christian walk. And so we just present our time to you now, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I have a couple of things I wanted to share with you. And <clears throat> the first one is from uh, Martha Snell uh, Nicholson. It's in called, I Come Quickly. It said, sickened with slaughter and weary of war, torn by bereavement and pain, daily our eyes are searching the skies for signs of his coming again. Longing we pray at dawning day, dawning of day, Lord, wilt thou come before noon, imploring him yet in the fading sunset, O blessed Lord Jesus, come soon. Imploring <clears throat> precious the word, the ear of faith heard, lo, I come quickly, my bride. This longing of thine is not greater than mine, to have thee at last by my side. He's coming, he is coming. And so, this one, you can apply yourself to it, it's somewhat humorous, but I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. I don't know who wrote it, I don't know who Author Unknown is, so uh, it's called Surprise. I dreamt death came the other night, and heaven's gates swung wide, an angel with halo bright ushered me inside, and there to my astonishment stood folks I judged and labeled as quite unfit of little worth and spiritually disabled. Indignant words rose to my lips, but never were set free, for every face showed stunned surprise, not one expected me. So, how's your walk with God, huh? So, so uh, well, this one uh, has a little humor to it also. It says, little Susan was mother's helper. She helped set the table when company was due for dinner. Presently, everything was on. The guests came in and everyone sat down. Then mother noticed something was missing. Susan, she said, you didn't put a knife and fork at Mr. Smith's place. Oh, I thought he wouldn't need them, explained Susan. Daddy says he always eats like a horse. <laughs> so, from our text this morning, uh, I would like for you to go with me today to the banks of the Jordan River. 
the river which looms so large in the history of God's people. We see a mighty multitude gathered there. They're crowded around a strange looking man, a rough man from the country. This man is speaking in thunderous tones. He calls upon the people to repent. He points out their sins, both as a nation and as an individual and climaxes his message by crying out, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. At first, the people were astonished. They didn't feel any need of repentance. Weren't they, de de weren't they the descendants of Abraham? Weren't they God's chosen people? Didn't they worship at the temple? Didn't they observe all the feast days? Who is this man to tell them to repent? But the preacher said, you may call yourselves children of Abraham, but the religion of your forefathers will not save you. Then he began to name their personal sins to them. Many of them saw themselves as they looked in God's sight. They saw themselves as sinning against a holy God. They crowded closer to the preacher, confessed their sins, and were baptized in the River Jordan. Who is this strange? Who is this strange and mighty preacher who had such power that the cities emptied themselves and flocked? to hear him. I'll tell you who he is. This is John the Baptist, the great baptizer, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And there, and where did he come from? Listen to his introduction from the Bible and tell me if literature can boast of a more powerful presentation of a man. Here it is, folks. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about John the Baptist. You know, I don't ever remember hearing anyone give a speech, a message on John the Baptist. But when the scripture says there was a man sent from God and his name was John. I mean, that has to grab you. We need to learn a little bit more uh, about him because in, in his life, he was one faithful giant of a man. Amen. He was one great giant of serving God. He was one yeah. great, <clears throat> great man doing what God wanted him to do regardless of the consequence. That's our friend John the Baptist and I hope that when we finish here uh, this morning that we have a, a greater appreciation for, for John the, the Baptist. I remember when I was first starting to study uh, the Bible after I was saved on, on Okinawa, uh, I pictured John the Baptist, you know, just in in some type of, of of clothing from an animal and a big burly hairy uh, person, but you know, over the years, that's not important. What was important was his walk with God. Yes. Okay, I'm going to tell you how that started too. Uh, and in a moment. So he was a preacher's son who made good. He himself was a mighty preacher. He was a rugged individualist. He was fearless in his denunciation of sin. He was 
a tremendous success. Yes, he was, he was all of these. But first of all, and most important, he was a man sent from God. There have been other men from God. Martin Luther was surely a man sent from God to turn Christianity away from formalism and ecclesiasticism to a simple faith in God. John Wesley, was <clears throat> he came from an experience where he was strangely warned to melt the icicles which clung about the religion of his day. Dwight L. Moody was a surely a man sent from God. He was an uneducated a man, but he broke hearts for God wherever he went, calling the church back to evangelism and a, a compassion for the lost. Billy Sunday, Billy Graham, <clears throat> John R. Rice, <clears throat> Jack Van Empey, uh, <clears throat> all of these. I mentioned Billy Graham to kindle new revival fires uh, in many places, to call sinners to repentance and the church to a higher standard of Christianity, of Christian living. And down through the centuries, down through the centuries, God has sent men of lesser stature, but godly men just the same. And God used them to bring light and salvation to men in a million dark corners. Amen. Yes, God has sent many men, but there has <clears throat> ever been one equal to John the Baptist, about whom Jesus said, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Boy, what a statement from Jesus Christ himself about John the, the Baptist. Well, let's just give us a little background here. The first few verses of John tell us about the Son of God sent down to man. Now the picture changes. Now the picture changes. And we see a man sent down from God. Look at his background. Do you know what his background is? Not very many know what his background is. But it, it's an interesting uh, story. Zacharias was his father. He was a priest. John's mother was Elizabeth. They were righteous people. They kept all the laws of God. But they had one sorrow in their lives, one fly in the anointment. They were both old, and God had never blessed them with any children. Some people would say, that's fine, we don't want a lot of children around to look after. But not these people, not these people. They felt that children were an heritage of the Lord. Yet, they didn't complain. They didn't say, well, the Lord's not treating me properly or rightly, and uh, they just kept on praying. Today we hear some people say, I live rightly, I go to church, I give money. Why doesn't God do more for me? Hey, let me tell you something. God isn't for sale. Amen. Okay, he's not for sale. He's available for redemption. He's available for love. He's available for friendship, he's available that we can learn. So, you know, don't, don't try to buy God, you know. Don't give to God and then go home and say, well, I hope, he, I hope God rewards me for what I just put in the plate this morning. Uh, God's not for sale. But you know what is? His love. And it's not even for sale because he gives it to you. Okay? His mercy, his wisdom, his knowledge. Salvation. Okay? You can't buy salvation. 
okay? It, and you can't go through the back door to heaven to get to heaven, because there's no back door in heaven, okay? It's front door entry, folks. It's front door entry. And once we accept Christ as our Savior, we are on the road to the front door of heaven where Jesus Christ waits to, to welcome us home. Okay? You couldn't put a price on it anyway, could you? We don't have that kind of, kind of money. Uh, I've, I've, I've told this story several times. Uh, my, <clears throat> when I got out of, discharged out of the Air Force, in 1955, uh, 50, 55. We were stationed down in Blytheville, Arkansas. And, and when, when we got discharged, and so we went over to Kentucky to spend time a few days with Leah's uh, sister and brother-in-law, who happened to be a bird colonel in the in the army stationed at Fort Knox, Kentucky. So, but the blessing of it all was that Billy Graham's crusade was in Louisville, Kentucky. And so we, we were able to go see him two nights. This was just before his big movement and his big uh, uh, crusade in uh, New York City. And it was, it was tremendous success in his ministry. Well, after, after we had had uh, uh, dinner after the crusade and harm, uh, he went to and took some money out of his pocket to pay the, pay the bill. I mean, he was a bird colonel and I was I was a just discharged three striper. So uh, anyway, uh, he he looked at his money and he he says, "Oh, oh, I thought I, I thought I put a ten dollar bill in the offering plate at Billy Graham's crusade, but I'm I I must have put twenty dollars in it." And I says, "You know what, harm." I mean, I could say that because I was discharged, you know. So I says, you know what, Harm? You're only going to get credit for 10. <laughs> true, true story. And he, he's kind of got a smile on his face and he says, I think you're right. But he had enough to pay for our dinner. <laughs> so anyway, that was, he's, our Lord's not, not uh, for sale in in any way. Well, to, well, when we say, why doesn't God do more for me? That's the wrong spirit. That's the wrong spirit uh, to, to have. Why doesn't, <clears throat> we're not to serve God just for what we get out of him. If he fills our hands with blessings, we are to serve him with the best we have. If those hands are empty, if God doesn't give us everything we want, we still ought to serve him with the best that we have. Right. Zacharias did this. One day, Zacharias was carrying out his duties in the temple. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him. But the angel, <coughs> but Zacharias, began to tremble and fear fell upon him. But the angel said, don't, don't be afraid. The Lord has heard your prayer and he's going to give you a son. He will make you very happy and many people will rejoice at his birth. He's going to be the advanced agent for the Messiah he will be a great man in every way. His name will be John. Zacharias then replied, this just can't be. We're, we're too old. But the angel said, yes, this is going to happen. But because you didn't believe it, you will be struck dumb 
until it comes to pass. Then Zacharias went out of the temple and tried to speak, but he, he couldn't, he couldn't say, he couldn't say a word. The people knew that something marvelous had happened. God always keeps his promise. In due time, a son was born to Zacharias and Elizabeth. The cousins and the neighbors came in, looked at the baby and says, since this is their first baby, he should be called Zacharias after his father. But Elizabeth answered and said, no, he shall be called John. But they said, nobody in your family bears that name. They then made signs to the father and asked him what the baby should be named. He called for a tablet and wrote, his name is John. Just as soon as he wrote the name John, God gave him back his power of speech. Busy, right from the scriptures, right from the scriptures. His tongue was loosed and he began to praise God and prophesy great things in his, for his son. Isn't that an amazing story? Yeah. You know, what if we didn't take God at his word? What would happen if we couldn't speak? You know, I know the arms would get all this and we do all these, these things. But you know, what I'm saying, when God speaks to you, listen and don't question him. Just say, here I am, Lord, send me. That's what Isaiah said. Here am I, Lord, send, send me. That's what D.L. Moody, that's what uh, Billy Graham, that's what Charles Stanley. Here I am, Lord, send me. Yes. You know what? Maybe he's saying thank to each one of you. Got something for you to do. Answer him. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Say, well, I'm too old. Uh, I don't know. Never too old. You know, I'd rather die in this pulpit than die in a rest home. Yeah. So I'm here as long as God wants me to be here. And when he says, uh, enough's enough, I'll say amen to that as well. But I'll follow it. I'll follow it. And so, uh, <clears throat> these godly parents brought John up in the right way. Now we've talked about the angels appearing and promising a son, even telling what his, his name is going to be, and he, he'll be great. And, and yes, these godly parents brought John up in the right way. They taught him the great truth of God. The Holy Spirit taught him what his mission in life would be. When he became a young man, he went out to live in the wilderness. There he lived on a simple diet of locusts and wild <clears throat> honey. The time came for him to start on his ministry. And he came out of the wilderness clothed in camel's hair with a girdle of skin about his loins. He dressed and acted like an Old Testament prophet. When the people saw him, they knew <clears throat> that here was a preacher who was different. There was something strange and great about him. The people went out in great numbers, heard his sermons, responded to his invitations, and confessed their sins. John then, John then baptized them in the river Jordan. We have some folks here that I had the privilege of baptizing them in the river Jordan. It's a blessing to, to, to do that. In the olden days of England, a man said, when an Englishman has three sons, 
He trains the bravest and blessed one for the Navy. And the second son is not quite up to par. He trains him for the Army. If the third son is stupid and good for nothing, then he trains him for the ministry. <laughs> That's, that was a policy <laughs> in, in those days. But God's methods were exactly opposite. He selected the brightest and the best men of that day to prepare the way for Christ. Amen. Even an angel would have coveted the honor which was given to John the Baptist. Well, what was, what was his mission? Well, we're told that John the Baptist came to hear witness to Christ. We can go back to Malachi 3.1 and read, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And we go back to Isaiah 40, verse 3 through 5 and read, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. That's Isaiah chapter, chapter 40. John the Baptist was a fulfillment of these scriptures. He came as a voice crying in the wilderness. He came as a herald of the coming of Christ. He came as an advance agent for the Savior. In the olden days, when some mighty king or potentate would come into a city, a man would go before him, blowing a trumpet, crying out and announcing the coming of the great man. The people then would get ready to greet him and give him honor to him. Now Jesus, the eternal Son of God, is coming into the world. John was his advance agent announcing his coming. We're told quickly <clears throat> that John was not the light of the world. He was not one who could save those who believed. No, Jesus was the light. And that's explained a little later on when we uh, see <clears throat> we had for our text five through seven, didn't we? Okay, but then it talks about the light and saying, John, John wasn't the light, but Jesus Christ was the light. Yeah. Okay, so John the Baptist knew his role, I believe, virtually as a young man. And it said, and he, he, he lived, I think he lived a life in solitude, but I think God was with him, and God taught him, and God led him. And when he came out of the wilderness to preach Jesus Christ, he was ready. Yep. He was yeah. ready to let the, let the arrows fly. Mm -hmm. I'm here to announce Jesus Christ. Because he says, Behold, the Son of God, behold him. He must increase, I must decrease. Boy, that's, that's, that was from one of his special meetings with angels or deity in the wilderness until time was ready. Well, we talked in Sunday school this morning, uh, Dave, about time and God's, God's timing. God knew just exactly when he wanted John the Baptist to come out of the wilderness and pave the way because it was time for Jesus Christ to come and be 
Jesus Christ and be our, our Savior. So uh, Jesus was to be the light of the world. Did he need someone to point him out? When the sun is shining in all of its glory, who are the ones who don't know it's shining? It's those who are blind. They must be told that the sun is shining. So when Jesus came, the people were so blind in sin and so steeped in iniquity that they had to be told that the light was at hand. What a revelation of man's sinful condition. So we see that John came as a witness. A witness does not deal in speculation. He doesn't speak his own opinions. He testifies to what he knows to be the truth. And let me tell you, from day one, John the Baptist preached the truth. Yes. Every, and it cost him dearly. Yes. I don't know if we'll have time to get to that, that point, but that's, that may be a, another, another message. Uh, he testifies, he tells what he saw and heard. This is the aim, really, of every pastor, every preacher. That should be their, their goal, to get each one of us to be, to be hearers, to look away from him and to Christ. I just want Christ to be so relevant in your life, in your walk, in your speech, in your activities, in your actions. That's what God prepared. John the Baptist, wasn't it? Yeah. No matter what, he had to tell the king, he's wrong. You know, told some of the people that they were living in, in sin. So, as a bird dog points to a covey of birds so that the hunter will know where they are. So the preacher is to be a pointer, pointing men to Jesus Christ. And I, I thrive on doing that to present Jesus as Savior, as one that forgives. Oh, so in the old days of revival, a good man would be called upon to pray. Often he would pray. God bless the preacher and help him to hide himself behind the cross so that we will see nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. This is a fitting prayer. If a preacher in any way draws attention away from Christ and to himself, he is a failure. His message from the pulpit of his life every day should be, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Can't you just picture now John coming out of the wilderness in the, in the clothing that he, that he had, and he must have been extremely healthy to eat raw honey and locust. I mean, I, I don't know which he ate first, but, <laughs> but he was, God prepared him for what he wanted him to do. And that's what God wants to do with each one of, of us. But the preachers are not the only ones to witness. It's a duty of all of us. As fruit tree bears fruit, so should a Christian bear fruit. The fruit of one Christian is another Christian, okay? And that so uh, Jesus was coming to earth the first time. It was John's business to prepare the way for his first coming. It's our task to prepare others for the rapture of the church. Amen. Jesus was coming to in the air. Well, when the people came to hear John, what message did they hear? Here it is. It came like thunder breaking over the mountain crags, 
Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now the way to enter that kingdom is through Jesus Christ. But you will never get to him until you have repented of your sins. Is that so true? And so... <clears throat> You can put the Atlantic Ocean in a teacup easier than you can get to heaven without repentance. Amen. We got it? Okay. Yeah. 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 We can walk on water before. But the most important thing is having that relationship with Jesus Christ. That was what John's total life uh, was. So we, you can enclose the Rocky Mountains in a shoebox easier than you can be saved without repentance. There is no salvation without repentance. Amen. Forgiveness. Seeking the love of the blood of Jesus Christ yes. to cleanse your, your sin. Forgive you your your sin. Yes, so you. the tragedy today is that the doctrine of repentance is not mentioned from a very many pulpits today. Men speak of God as the father of all people. They talk of the sparkle of divinity in every man. Well, I'm going to tell you that there's deep sin in every man. We're born in sin, and we, we, unless we learn about amazing grace along the way, you'll die in sin. Okay, so the only light that we can have that's an eternal light is the light of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit in your very being. Okay? Dick and I went to a function uh, last night. I think, I think we showed our light, Dick, people to see that we were, we were there to help. We were there to share. We were there to talk about our Lord, do whatever we, we could do. We walked over as we started meeting people, not to do anything else but introduce ourselves and, and let God use us. And I, I, believe he, I believe he did. And I appreciate what Dick uh, did. So anyway, my friends, if you want to be a soul winner, then you have to be right with God. You have to know the truth and you have to share it with love and compassion. And that's where it all boils down. I think I've got a, another message, but uh, uh, well, I think I'll just close there because I want to talk about man's uh, spirit, John the Baptist's spirit a little later on. And I want to talk to you about his reward. Uh, so I'll, I'll, next Sunday I'll be bringing a Mother's Day uh, message and then the following we'll get back to some more. But as I, as I studied about John the Baptist, from his birth, from godly parents. He lived a young life devoted to Jesus Christ. And, I, and the verse just kept coming out. <clears throat> we, he, John the Baptist cried out, Behold the Son of God that taketh away the sins of the world. That was his initial message. Then later on, he said, 
I must decrease, he must increase. Right position to be in, right? So, so my friends and YouTube land, it's all about relationship. We don't preach religion, we preach relationship. The Bible teaches relationships. The Bible teaches forgiveness of sin to establish a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's, that's where it's all at, folks. So when you pick up a book or something that has a little story about John the Baptist in it, read it. Read it, you'll be, you'll be blessed. And I'll tell the next couple of weeks, I'll tell you how, <clears throat> what happened to John, John the Baptist. But I'll also tell you right now, he ended up in heaven. Amen. The front door was open for John the Baptist. And the front door will open to you if you want to accept Jesus as your Savior. So, my friends in YouTube land, it's your call. We simply try to make the invitation clear to you. And I just plead with you to be right with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the, the story of John the Baptist is, is just a whale of a story. It's awesome. It's awesome. You knew when John the Baptist was born of Elizabeth that you had plans for, for him. He honored those plans even to his death. And our, my dear friends, Jesus Christ died for you as well. So if you need him, he's there for you. Just talk to him. Very simple language. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for shedding your blood. I know I'm a sinner. I ask you, to forgive me of my sins, come into my heart and be my savior. You do that in sincerity, there's no place in scripture that you would be refused. So I just commit it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So my dear friends there in YouTube land, uh, thanks for being with us. We'd love to hear from you. You write us at Valley View Baptist Church Post Office Box 12653, Ogden, Utah, 84412. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, God loves you. You take care. Be safe. Hi.